and welcome to the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, Jay Pop. And welcome back to the Homemade Podcast of Sports with your host, Jay Pops. Guys, today's date is December 3rd, 2020. It is a beautiful Thursday in the great city of Houston, Texas, people. Uh, the sun is shining out here. Uh, yesterday, it wasn't looking too good. You know, it, it was pretty ugly out here. But today, this is a new day and a beautiful day, okay? So, guys, bear with me. Uh, I know I hadn't been coming out with a couple of podcasts throughout the week, only because I had to get some things done, people. I had to get, uh, you know, a, a couple of things uh, put on my car. I had to get a couple of things worked on on my car. So I hadn't been having time. I know I didn't come out with the national statistical rankings for the uh, Texas A&M uh, against Auburn game. That's fine. But I want you guys to be on the lookout and... We're going to have to see if we can link up one tomorrow. I will try to do my best to uh, get with a Auburn podcaster that actually reached out to me. Shout out to Auburn, by the way. Shout out to you guys. I keep on telling you guys, Texas a and and Auburn is turned into a sneaky rivalry. A lot of people don't want to believe that, but we're turned into a sneaky rivalry in the SEC West. Yeah, our rivalry is LSU, but we're kind of turned into that rivalry with Auburn too. Auburn don't like us. We don't like Auburn. All right? But... Shout out to Auburn, you know, uh, that guy wanted to link up with me, and we're, we're just going to talk a little bit of football, you know, so hopefully I can link up with him tomorrow, and I can put that video out there tomorrow, okay? Uh, to Auburn fans, if you're listening, just hold up. Anywho, uh, like I say, man, my apologies to you guys for not coming out with videos. I know you guys may have been looking for it, and a lot of you guys may have not. But I love you guys to the ones who are looking for these videos to keep coming out. Uh, anywho, we're not going to talk about no statistical rankings today, neither. What I wanted to talk about is something real, real deep to me and to a lot of Texas A&M fans and to a lot of Texas A&M alumni, to the guys that just went to the school and but didn't really, you know, just follow the sports. But they still watch the sport and particularly the uh the the sport of uh football and, and baseball of course because our baseball team is pretty good as well basketball is starting to get there volleyball team you know with girls and things like that they're pretty good the women's basketball team they're starting to get there okay soccer that team is pretty good although i do not follow all of these guys i primarily follow football i still have a mobile device that I keep people, that I get updates on about everything, okay? So please remember that. But on today's latest edition of the Homemade Podcast Sports, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I posted and something that, like I say, is very, very uh, dear to me and to a lot of a and fans. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. So I posted something on uh, Facebook in one of the Aggie groups that I'm in. And well, I posted that in all of the Aggie groups that I'm in. I got a, I got 98% damn good feedback, 98% believings in what I said, maybe about 2% and, ah, you know, well, mm, man, we'll see, you know, things of that nature. No, no, no negative comments. That's what I love is just maybe two 50-50 comments of, oh, I got to just see it, you know, to believe it type of deal. So, hear me out here. I, I, I want you guys to tune in deeply. If you guys hadn't been watching this podcast about uh, the Texas a and football team, I need you guys, then for the first time listeners, I need you guys to tune in now, okay? Hear me out and listen to me on this. So, I wrote, so a lot of fan bases has laughed and laughed and laughed at Texas a and football. But mark my words when I tell you this. Texas a and football is a sleeping giant that is waiting to be awake. And the reason why I wrote that is because I I, I was watching the late kick uh, 247 uh, show with Josh Prey. It comes on YouTube. If you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. And Josh, Josh Pate 
Josh, Josh Pray was the one that put it out there. He said that a lot of people may not believe this, but Texas a and them that that Texas a and them Aggie football team that is a sleeping giant waiting to be wakened. I mean, uh, wait, waiting to be awoken. It's just nobody has been able to come through there to wake him up yet. And he made an interesting point. He was like, man, you know, Clemson, you know, they, they went on like the 30-year drought, hadn't seen a national title, hadn't won a national title, things of that nature. You know what happened when that beast got awoken? Clemson is now on and rolling. Been in the top five for the last, what, five years now, ever since that beast has woke up. Texas and them, they're the same way. It's just they they they've been in a going on a hundred year drought to not even smelling or sniffing the national title, let alone the college football playoff berth. But that may change this year. That may just change. But we hadn't got there in almost a hundred years. Okay? So that's 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 way longer than what Clemson done. All right. So he was saying that guys have to know that something is coming. A wave is coming. That Texas and them football team just has to be woken up. Same thing can be said for the Longhorns, but the Longhorns just had so much over there in that city of Austin to where it's crazy. All right? Boosters are involved. Other people are involved. Moms and dads are involved. Everybody. At Texas and them, you got a lot of boosters and a lot of alumni is for this program because it's a rich state and a talent-rich state. But it's not a lot of people grabbing their hands and doing this, doing that, doing that. That's why Jimbo Fisher is able to just work. If you guys ever notice, his mind is focused on football, and I have not seen his mind be freed up that way in a very long time. Anywho, I was just telling you guys where I got this sort of, statement from in this conclusion from because when i say it it's like people don't listen but when the professional analysis guys say it it's like they be listening to me when i be talking and they'll put it out there and all of a sudden everybody will agree with it so i'm here to give you guys my perspective once again as a unprofessional analysis okay this is coming from a fan but this is also coming from a fan analysis. All right. So I want you guys to listen up. Keep on listening. This team is just a quarterback away. So just stay patient. All right. Just stay patient. Kellen Munn is taking us to newer heights and also laying some groundwork. But when Haynes King people, when Haynes King, if you guys don't know, that's the quarterback that came in in the 2020 recruiting class. All right, freshman, hadn't red shirted. He's been out there a little bit. A lot of you guys know him. And a couple of you guys may not know him, but then again, I believe that 98% of you guys know who I'm talking about already. All right? But when Haynes King steps foot on that field next year, in which he should, should be the starter hands down, he will be, he will be the guy that can say he beat Alabama at home and made a statement. Now, that's a bold statement to say. That's a bold thing to say right there. And I know it is. But I see something in that kid, and it's a lot of fire. It's a lot of energy. Alabama hadn't seen that in a long time from that Texas and football program. And it's a lot of Alabama fans know, and Nick Saban knows himself, that although LSU had woke up and risen from the dead last year, Texas a and is getting there, okay? They're getting there. Anywho, keep listening. His time will come next year in which that offensive playbook will be locked into his head so tight to where when he runs the offense, it will look like, it will look like he's read the defense in his sleep, okay? A lot of you guys listen to that. So just think about it. If we're ranked at number one or number two, and this is no, and this was something else that came from Josh Pray. Think about it. If those guys are ranked, and he said this here. Think about it. If those guys are ranked at number one or number two next year, do you not know how electric Kyle Field will be? Do you not know that we'll blow the it, 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 the, the top is already blown up? But do you not know that we're blow the 
we'll blow the seats out of that stadium. We will blow, we will absolutely blow these seats out of that stadium, people. So to think that when AM isn't right, we already blow the top off, period. But when they are ranked, and especially in the top five like we are now, do you not know what damage we can do to a team when it comes to home field advantage? Do you guys not know that? Think about it. If a and is either ranked number one or number two, or hell, even number three, or number four at, at for, for that map, if those guys are ranked in that throughout the entire season, and going into a home game, do you not know how hard it will be? And let me keep on reading, all right? Do you not know how hard it will be to get a win from any opposing team coming in Kyle Field? You guys, man, look, I'm not, I'm not going to say I want you guys to dream. I just want you guys to think for a minute. Think. Put this in your mind for a minute. I want you guys to think and hear me out. We're going in the right direction. Jimbo Fisher is leading his team in the right direction as a coach. Kellen Munn is leading his team in the right direction as a quarterback and a player. He hasn't played that good. I understand that. But he's never had a number five ranking on a back. <laughs> on his back. That entire team has never been in the top five. This is the first time ever. This is the first time ever in about maybe five years that we're the number five ranked team going into almost the end of the season. When have we ever been there? It's been like six years, man. Six years. All right. Anywho, keep listening to me. This is the future, but it had to start somewhere, and that time has started. Okay, that time has started right now. Just be patient because this sleeping giant of a football team is about to wake up and build a powerhouse. What we're doing right now is we're putting the bricks together and the layers together, the dirt, the foundation, the groundwork to being a national powerhouse. That's why if you guys can remember maybe a year or two ago when Jimbo Fisher was out there recruiting and he got Fidel Diggs from New Jersey, this is what Jimbo Fisher said. He didn't just want to get the state of Texas. No, 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 no. He, 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 he didn't just want to lock that down. He wanted to put Nick, he wanted to put Texas a and all over 50 states and let people see that this is a national brand. No, 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 no. We need to take this global. This is a national brand. That is how you start your powerhouse. All right. You start seeing the results on the field. Okay? Anywho, keep listening. You guys have seen what Clemson can do when the beast finally woke up. So now it's our turn. And I can tell you this. We will have the state of Texas behind us. Hashtag Giggle Maggots. Hashtag Giggle. So what I mean by that, and you know, I threw Haynes King, Kellen Munn, things of that nature in there. So... What Kellen Munn has been doing for the last three years is laying nothing but groundwork. We never said that Kellen Munn was going to win a national title. Nobody ever said that. Nobody. Nobody ever said that. But Kellen Munn may just be the quarterback that leads us into a playoff berth this year. He may just be. Now, now, will we get in the playoffs and win it? Well, we don't know that yet. But we'll damn sure make it competitive. I can tell you that. We will damn sure make it competitive. And I have been strudging off the playoff talk for a long time. But now it's time for me to talk about it. Do I believe that we'll make it to the playoffs? Yeah, if Ohio State can. If we continue to win out and Ohio State, for whatever reason, can't make that number four spot, you're damn right we'll be in the college football playoffs. You know what I'm saying? It's a bust about it. But if Florida wins... That SEC championship game, you know, if they continue to win out, go to the SEC championship and win, then we're not going to be in the playoff. You know what I'm saying? The buzz about it. No, we're not. But if Ohio State can't make that number four spot, you can best believe Texas and them football being the college football playoffs. So, and do, so, with that being said, 
Do you not know what that means? Because this is a new era. This is a new day and time and a new era. We will be the first Texas team. Understand this. We will be the first ever Texas team to reach the college football playoffs. Period. I told you all time is coming. Everybody wants the Texas Longhorns to be there, and everybody wants the Texas Longhorns to be good already. Everybody has rushed the process, but then again, everybody has gave time to the Texas Longhorn program. As of right now, right now, like I say, the only thing that's in the way of the Texas Longhorns, and yes, this is the Texas A&M football uh, podcast, UT is our rival, but the only thing that's stopping the Longhorns from getting to be, from, from getting to where they really want to be is the boosters. It's the boosters. That is it. It's the boosters, but also, no, 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 I'm not going to say that. It's not only the boosters. It's player development. For whatever reason, Tom Herman can't develop his players over there. For whatever reason, I don't know what's getting in the way of that development neither, but Tom Herman, for whatever reason, can't develop that number three class, number four class, number five, number six class over there. Because he's recruited his ass off. He just can't develop them. I don't know why, but he can't develop them. And uh, the guy from Iowa State, uh, the running back, after that win against uh, Texas, he, he, he made a very interesting point. He said that it's a five-star culture against five-star players. <laughs> Never heard of that in my life, but that, that quote just may be true. There's a lot of those guys that are four and five stars that just came over there and just ultimately felt like, hey, well, man, we're, we're the better team, we're the better guys, and hell, I know we're going to win. And they go out there and lose. They go out there and lose. But that's because of lack of player development. In my honest opinion, and in is in a lot of others' opinions. All right. So, anywho, so this this the reason why I say this, man. And a lot of people may not want to talk about it in the great state of Texas, but the state of Texas alone, and and we're just talking about college football wise and stuff like that. All right. The state of Texas is on their way to giving Texas a And M that baton and ultimately saying hey i know we done this and that and that and this it's been a long time but we're handing this off to you go and get it done bring a national title or at least a playoff berth or a couple of playoff berths back home to the great state of texas where it belongs now, the national title is the goal, but you have to start in the playoffs. You have to consistently see that. You know, uh, Oklahoma is another one. They're consistently seeing the playoffs, but they just hadn't seen the national title game yet. As of right now, I'll say probably by next year or the year after next, you can you can maybe count Oklahoma in as maybe going to, to that national title game if, if their defense can get it together. That is an offensive juggernaut over there at Oklahoma. All right but we aren't talking about Oklahoma. But they're close. They're, they're on the cusp of breaking that barrier, you know. But uh, that Texas baton is ultimately being passed to Texas a and football because they know that we're more closer than any Texas football team, period. We're outdoing the Texas Longhorns by a mile. All right, we're outdoing them by a mile. Texas Longhorns know that. That's why you're now seeing a lot of opt-outs in that program as of now, after that Iowa State loss. You, you've now start, you're, you're now starting to see the opt-outs and you're now starting to see the decommitments. Also, I'm hearing, uh, not from a source, but you know, I'm reading from my 247 uh, stuff and things of that nature, and also on Twitter, that Tom Herman Tom at Texas University is now ultimately about to come to an end. I think they're about to agree to uh, mutually, mutually part ways. I don't believe they'll fire him, but they're about to mutually agree to part ways. Uh, like I say, the baton, the baton is now 
on this Texas A&M football team. This Texas A&M football team has gotten way further than anybody would have ever thought. But then again, it's a lot of professional analysis. And it's, and it's a lot of people that just follow the game of football, period, especially college football, that has always known that Texas A&M was a sleeping giant. And it was a comment that a guy had made in the Aggie Sports Group and said, well, you know, man, I've been looking at this for years and years, man, and we woke up, and then, but then we'll roll over and go right back to sleep. Yeah, that's true. I get that. But this is different. This is different. Uh, as of right now, and I, I just want to go through some head coaching stuff here. Jimbo Fisher is our head coach, of course. SEC. This is in. This is what he's done in the conference alone. So he's in his third year. A lot of people may not want to think he's in his third year because it feels like he's been there a lot longer than that. But Jimbo Fisher record as of right now is twenty three and ten. That's doing good in the SEC West. In the SEC alone, and at the same time, you're trying to build something that was never built. Okay, you're trying to build a SEC team and an SEC roster. Jimbo Fisher right now is twenty three and ten, six and one for his twenty twenty record right now. Six and one. This is a six and one football team. We have Auburn. My mind will be off. That that is no doubt about that, and I don't feel any other way about that. Okay. 23 and 10. His overall record is 106 wins, 33 losses. I'm going to say that once again. His overall record is 106 wins, 33 losses. So the man loves winning. He doesn't like losing. He doesn't like losing at all. So what he's implementing is his mind, his mind pattern into the football team to where those guys have ultimately put it in their minds also that they don't like to lose. They love winning. They don't like to lose. Losing, losing in the option. They don't, they don't like to lose. I'm not going to lose. Now, we may not be winning by style points, ball mean, that's fine, but we're winning. We're winning. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. We're winning. And that's that. Overall bowl record, 72. I just told he didn't like losing. He does not like losing. 72 in the bowl records. It's a lot of guys. All them bowls don't mean nothing. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Championships. One national title with Florida State. We all know that. Three ACC titles. Okay, four ACC Atlantic Division titles. All right, as an assistant coach, he won one national title, 2003 with Nick Saban. You guys have to understand, man, what Jimbo Fisher is used to is being in a big time. Jimbo Fisher is used to being on a big time stage in a and in a national spotlight. So what he wants to do is put this team in a national spotlight and put these guys on a big time national stage. That is why I'm telling you that this football team is different. This football team is about to be a powerhouse in the making. This football program, I'm sorry, is about to be a powerhouse in the making. When Jimbo Fisher came, and this this is why I always talk about Leon O'Neal. He's, he, he's one of my favorite guys on the defense. Reason why I talk about Leon O'Neal is because I seen Leon, I, I seen Leon O'Neal, and this is the safety now. I I seen that young man commit to Kevin Sumlin when he was here, and don't get me wrong, Ke Kevin Sumlin put us on that national spotlight. So that's why we're being still kind of primarily treated this way and talked about this way. He was the one that got us there, but Manziel was the one that pushed it. You know, I don't believe the ex expectations was that high, but when Manziel got us there, he ultimately pushed the expectations to be that high period all right but anywho i seen leon o'neill commit to kevin sumlin decommit when he found out kevin sumlin got let go but committed right back in and bought in to jimbo fisher and mike elko see mike elko has been there ever since jimbo fisher's been there because that's who he went out and got 
The reason why Leon O'Neal is playing a little bit better now and way better than what he played as a freshman is because him and Mike Elko are like this, okay? They're like that, all right? The reason why him and Mike Elko and Jimbo Fisher is like this, I want to say, and no, I, I, I haven't talked to uh, Jimbo Fisher or, or Leon O'Neal, but, but I have talked to some of Leon's close relatives, all right? Some of Leon O'Neal's close relatives. They're like this, all right? That defensive playbook is thick. It's thick. But once you grasp it, this is what can happen. And that's what we're seeing now. Once you catch on to the playbook, what's happening is that you, we're now pushing ourselves to being the number one defense. A lot of people, oh, defense still doesn't matter. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right, it does. Please believe me on that. But Leon O'Neal has caught on. All right, Leon O'Neal has now ultimately taken the defensive torch. But once again, I've watched that young man decommit and commit right back in to where now he's a team captain on that defense. All right? Anywho, the point I'm making is that Leon O'Neal headlined the first ever Jimbo Fisher's recruiting class. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm, you, now you see what I'm getting at? He headlined that class. When, once he headlined that class and where he decommitted but committed right back in, that brought a whole lot more people to signing under Jimbo Fisher's first tenure here, first ever recruiting class here. We didn't have a lot. We were still ranked at number 17. But that next following year, that next following year is when we signed the number four recruiting class. I told you it had to start somewhere. Leon O'Neal headlined that class. That next following year, in that 2019 recruiting class, and let, and let me pull it up here. Because I don't I don't want to get it wrong on who actually headlined that class. And it's not really coming to mind on who actually headlined that class. So let me log on here and make sure that I point out the right individual. All right. Let me make sure of this. So, who headlined that particular class? All right, 2019, where are you at? So, for that 2019 class, the person who headlined that, and this young man has been playing stellar right now. Keon Green, offensive tackle, the five-star committee. After that, the Marvin Leal headlined the defensive side of the ball. Another five-star committee. And he's playing lights out as well. So following that class, in the 2020 recruiting class, we followed that up by signing the number six class nationally. Again, you want to know who headlined that? The safety converted into cornerback, Jalen Jones. Which, in my mind, is forming to be one of the best freshman corners in all of college football right now. You want to know who's behind him? That came right on in behind him on the offensive side of the ball, that headlined the offensive side, was the Mundine in which we are all waiting on. I believe that we'll see him in the Auburn game. I believe so. We're all waiting on him. But who followed behind him on the offensive side? And these are the guys who followed behind the Mullen Demons on the offensive side. It was Chris Morris, offensive guard from Memphis, uh, Arkansas, from West Memphis, Arkansas, and Haynes King who was once a five-star quarterback. He was once a five-star dual three. 
He's once a five star from Longview, Texas. Once again, I just told you, great state of Texas is now starting to pass a baton to Texas a and and saying, no, 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 no. You guys take it. Take it and run with it. We feel like you guys are the better option in years to come. I can tell you right now. Also, who follow right behind Haynes King, and this is a guy that we've seen on the field so far. Devin the Chain. I told you guys, man, I, I, I'm, I follow recruiting. So now, with that being said, for our 2021 class, and, 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 and it starts with recruiting, but it also starts with a development. The guy that will ultimately headline uh, the headline of 2021 class, and I'm going to tell you guys this right now, and, and they and they have just made him into a five star. And for a long time, he was leaning Alabama. But he's starting to see something at Texas. And I told you, he's starting to see something at Texas. And this is another guy. This is another guy from the great state of Texas. He's from DeSoto, Texas. 2021. It's Shamar Turner. Strong defensive end. Shamar Turner. He's now being converted into a five star. Strong defensive end. This team is a sleeping giant, people. They're a sleeping giant. It's, it had to start somewhere. It started with Kellen Moore, quarterback and wide. But like I told you, nobody is expecting Kellen Moore to go and get a national title. If he does get the national title, well, God damn it, he just shocked a lot of us. And by all means, if that guy does go and get it, Kudos to you, kill. All right. But but the difference between this program and when Jimbo Fisher was at Florida State is Jim was that Jimbo Fisher was on a run at Florida State. He won a national title and was and was on his way back to playing a national title. But he had the opportunity of being the first, one of the first ever head coaches in the inaugural college football playoffs okay he knows how that feels he loves being on a national stage that's why he was sought out so much i i didn't understand it three years ago but as time went on and i i had watched florida state you know don't get me wrong i had watched florida state but jimbo fisher is a damn good head coach man that guy is damn good it's hard as hell to be a starter on his offense as a freshman, but he's damn good. When he gets that shit up and rolling, it's one of the more unstoppable type of offenses, and it's one of the more unstoppable type of teams overall when that train is rolling. When Florida State played that year, Jameis Winston was going on the run, his offense and defense was unstoppable. That next following year, the offense could have been stopped, but because that defense kept on showing up so much, they went on another unstoppable run. Another unstoppable run. When Jimbo Fisher was at LSU with Nick Saban, that offense was unstoppable. All right? You guys have to understand, man, Jimbo Fisher's a damn good head coach. He is. He is. He is. It's a lot of Florida State people who still blame that man for how the way Florida State looks now. I still hear his name three years later. At some point, they have to get over that and understand that it's something going on with you guys' program inside. It's something on the inside of that program that's going on, and they have to fix that soon or later. All right? But once again, it's time for you guys to believe in this team, and it's time for you guys to be behind this team. All right, this 2021 recruiting class, now, although I said a couple of podcasts back, we may not sign a five-star, but damn it, they just turned one of them that we are going to sign. I know for sure Shamar Turner will come here. Will he transfer out? I don't believe so, people. I don't think so. We only have one D commitment in this class. We had one transfer this year, which is, uh, no, no, we had two, which is James Foster and uh cam brown and he already had found school which is ucla so he must have been in contact with ucla for a long time now. but that's fine 
other than that, we don't have turnover here. All right, all those guys sit there and wait for their time. Those guys that's on that field now, those guys aren't all of Kevin Sumlin's recruits, as people would like to say. No, 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 no. Kellen Munn is a Kevin Sumlin recruit. Yeah, by all means. That's fine. But most of those guys that are out there on that field playing for Texas and them at the moment, all of those guys came from Jimbo uh came from Jimbo Fisher. Most of those guys, not all, most of those guys came from Jimbo Fisher people. So think of what only maybe about 10% of another guy's recruits compared to 90% of another guy's recruit all meshed together. And we're at a 6-1 and one record right now on the pace to go 9-1. and one. Think about when that roster fully, <laughs> think about when that roster fully is Jimbo Fish. You guys see what I'm getting here? His time at Florida State, yeah, I know he didn't do good with that last season, but Jimbo Fisher hasn't lost it, people. He's coming to build something, and I believe he took on that 10-year deal, yeah, because of the money, but he took on that 10-year deal because he wanted enough time to put things in place, and then when I, whenever he put all the things in place that he needed to put in place, he could go on a long-lasting run in which it may be a Nick Saban run. There's a lot of guys that don't want to believe that, but that is the only assistant that Nick Saban has coached, I mean, that has been under Nick Saban, that can actually say that they have a way better win and loss record as a Nick Saban assistant. As opposed to uh, Kirby Smart, but Kirby Smart hadn't been coaching for that long right now. But Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher are the only two guys. And Mark D'Antoni too, because Mark D'Antoni was at Michigan State and he, he had a pretty good record. But those are the only three guys that can actually say that we are being, they have been one of the better head coaches all time as a Nick Saban assistant. All right? So guys, also think about this here. Do you guys not know the conference that has all the head coaches that has won the national title. And if you guys didn't know, well, I'm putting it out there for you guys because a lot of you guys need to hear this. The SEC West alone has three guys on that side in this in the SEC period has three coaches that has all won a national title. Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, Ed Orgeron. Do you not know how hard that is to freaking coach against all three of those goddamn guys in the SEC West? Because all of them has been in the national spotlight before. And all of them has lifted up a national title before. That's insane. That is insane. I wish guys would really start talking about that a lot more. That is insane. But anywho... That's it. That's all I have for you guys, man. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of that, uh, you know, uh, just to put something in your mind and put some beliefs in you guys' mind if you guys didn't believe. Because some of you guys need to hear that. Some of you guys around the college football world need to hear that. Some of you Longhorn fans need to hear that, you know. Uh, but just believe in this team. Believe that the great state of Texas is now starting to pull that torch, man. Hand it to Texas and them football. And say, here, here you go. We thank you guys here. Don't let us down. <laughs> you know? So, think about, man, we're ranked at number five right now. This team is their, it's their first time being ranked at number five on Jimbo Fish. First time being ranked at number five with Kellen Munn at quarterback. You know? So, it's go time. Oh, and it's first time ever being ranked as a number one defense in all of the SEC. We've never been ranked there at all. So, hey, it is what it is. Uh, I just want you guys to think about that, man. Uh, you know, but once again, it's the Homemade Podcast Sports, people. Please, guys, subscribe. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. I thank you guys. I'm, I'm at about 290 subscribers now. Uh, I'm shooting for 1,000. I need 1,000 subscribers so we can go live. We can go live, people. I thank you guys once again, but please tell a friend and tell a friend. 
And once again, it's the Homemade Podcast Sports. The show is being sponsored by Dopin' and Styles and King's Beard Grooming Company. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to this, man. I love you guys. I love y'all. love you. Hashtag Gigamax. And thank you guys for tuning in to the Hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Please, guys, uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. And also follow me on Twitter at JPops. On Instagram at JPops. And also on Facebook at Hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Thank you guys once again. Hashtag Gigamax.